All right, all. Welcome back to my Let's Learn series. And for those who remember, we basically started out a little bit in the Far East continent. And it's pretty much been a quick visit, but we're just going to go through uh, a couple quick dungeons here, and then we're just going to go right back to the main, the main continent again. So right now we're in Briag's lair, and as you can tell, it's a sandworm theme type of lair. Though unlike the uh, you know the sandworm tunnels, ooh that's a newsmaster. Unlike the sandworm tunnels, this one has a little bit of uh, um, something different about it, so to speak. And apparently here's the boss. So here's Bragg, the great sandworm. He's basically a towering sand drake. He's a uh, um, well, he's basically a sandworm. He's, you know, not like the regular little drake guys. He's actually a, a real guy for, uh, you know, comparing to. Let's do this. We're going to sweep. Note that this guy some, sometimes has to run a little bit, so. Basically, let's just be, watch out for the fact that he can basically run around. That's him with furry. He's out of the way. Okay, this guy's getting annoying with his damn gravity, so let's just try and hit him. Ah, oh, the bastard uh, pin me there. Dropping more of his damn gravity stuff on me. All right, there we go. Why not? There's another one of these damn gravity worms coming for me. That's good enough. Boom. So yeah, that was the boss. As you can see, he's not too too damn tough. He basically is a, you know, an overpowered sandrake that can also summon some sandworms. And Bragg's lair, in um, contrast to the sandworm tunnels, is basically kind of like um, how can I put it? The walls aren't cr crashing down on top of me in this one. They're pretty much stable. They're not, you know. Um, shifting or being burrowed through, you're basically just running through a you know a standard type of dungeon, so to speak, with uh, the Bragg's Lair here, and um, I guess the sort of dungeon layout um, compared to other stuff. What can I say about? It? Uh. Well, I guess it's, you know, this is a bunch of, like, cavernous type of, like, you know, uh, you know, it's ba basically cavernous how, like, the layout of sort of is. It basically is a lot of, like, you know, cavern-like pathways for a dungeon to explore. There's also a bunch of water traps and stuff like that. Leftovers from a bygone age. So, we're just going to quickly just run through this dungeon. There's literally not going to be much to stop us. Doink. That uh, rare enemy there was a Wormick and he managed to hit me with um, Tornado. Tornado being a very special ability that um, basically has a chance to cause stun and knocks you back. And it's also very slow. It's a very slow projectile type attack, Tornado. Alright, they're all dead. Brawler. You can tell from the nice little fist sound he makes when he hits you. He's out of the way. And we are out. And it looks like we've got... A couple, you know, we apparently ran into four different rares on this map. But it doesn't look like any of them drop anything that has constitution for an increasing stat style. So we're just going to sell that. So once you basically pick up the resonating diamond for, um, you know, from Briag, because that's who, uh, that's basically who drops that resonating diamond for uh, there and back again, so you can basically make the thing. Um, you basically can basically head back 
And for some reason, that guy sort of ignored me there. I'll take my blessings. Except I ran to this guy. All right, we've got two blood mages over in the in the dark. This mage hunter here. He's blinding speed. I'm going to use this. Let's use this, I guess, prem prematurely. Zap. Zap. And they're all dead. Nothing really to say about that little cloak or robe. All right, so once you basically, you know, get back to uh, the gates of morning over here, you can enter it and just head on over to Zemakis. You'll ask for the gold, the two ingredients. There and back again, open a portal to Magiel from the Far East. So Zemakis draws, a, uh, you know, the ruin. Ruins on the floor using the Afterfin gem dust. The whole area starts to shake. Zemeki says the portal's done. So here is the way back to the Last Hope now. If um, I ever want to get back to the main continent, that's basically how I do it. You just do that little quick quest. You can talk to him. He'll say, you know, ah, David Letzler and take your size of foil. Yeah, whatever, all that. So we're quite happy. We're now uh, able to get back home. But before we actually go back home, I'm going to do another quick little dungeon. We're going to go over here to Arden Hall, and this is, if you recall from when I said so, this is the spider type of dungeon, or um, it's basically we're going to go get the spider ingredient for uh, um, the Brotherhood of Alchemist quest. So if you've yet to get the spider ingredients that you need for um, any of the alchemists in the Brotherhood of Alchemist quests, here's where you can go for them. And uh, that's fun, we've got two vampire lords here. Note that this isn't only just a spire dungeon, there's also other stuff in here. So, these guys are quite literally, you know, sometimes they'll spawn in here. Okay, I can hit um, one, two, three, four. I should be able to hit them all. So, boink. And we've got ourselves a gloomy thief over here. It'll be fun. And we killed those guys. Alright, so this guy right here, the fairling. This is actually the uh, spider I actually need to kill right there. So if I want to, I could just go up to him. Boink! There we go. I got myself the ingredient. Failing Fang. But before we go, we're just going to hang around and kill some of these other stuff in here before. Just, you know, vacating the place. So yeah, this is basically a Spire Fiend dungeon. You'll find lots and lots and lots of spider type enemies in here. Some of them will be like just the regular vermin, giant spiders and stuff like that. But you might find a few, uh, you know, here's a Garamash, this is a normal rank spider. These cunning spiders terrorize those who enter their ever-growing boars or the lairs. Those encounter them rarely return. So there's a normal rank spider. You got the spinning spider, that's just a regular critter, critter that you might just find in a regular continent quite a bit. By the way, you'll find yeah, random snow giants over here as well as in the uh, main continent. Okay, that's a troll. He's got anti-magic disruption. What are you? It looks like he's uh, an archmage. An archmage troll. A very dead arch archmage troll. Um, here's a lost hink. This is basically a frigid spider. So this is like an, a Wormick type of spider. He basically has Wormick type of talents, icy skin. Um, he's got frost hands, which basically uh, sheeps his hand frost, doesn't like cold damage. Ice storm, this guy basically has a whole bunch of like ice fiend type of talents. Elite type of spider there. There's a chitinous spider, you'll probably find them in the regular continent as much as it's here. I realize I could rush this uh, bloated horror, but I felt like just walking up to him. I'll note that once they get to a certain level, like 34, with uh, like the, you know these rogue type characters, you really don't even need to bother, you know, really caring about the stuff that you're killing anymore. Sometimes. Here's a weaver patriarch. Um, these like weavers are usually uh, um, temporal type of spiders in nature. So this guy has like you know temporal type of uh, talents in here that I might make use of. 
This guy right here is an acid type of spider, just uh, Nurhaling. He basically uses uh, acid like talents, so he's got like corrosive vapor that he just used on me. A bunch of other acid type of talents to make use of. There's lots and lots and lots of different type of spires. You'll basically probably encounter all different type of spires in this uh, this place. And we got spiders. Blink. By the way, I just used my special ability from uh, the um, the gloves from before. So this bit, when I use Ruin Earth, as you can see, it does like an aura. In this aura, anything that is just inside it will basically be cursed. Um, if you look at him, he's basically been weakened. So that's my basic my that's my basic effect here. I weakened this guy so that uh, he's basically ha has reduced damage. All right, you know what? We're going to do this, and I'll note by the way that I also get weakened in here. Okay, the problem is I've been stunned. All right, there we go, and he's dead. So, if um, you notice in this dungeon, it's, kind of, it's, it's again a cavernous type of layout. There's also a bunch of these unstable wormholes. Um, you can read it up on the lore. There's a little bit of lore for this place that basically is trying to like tell a, a little bit of the story of what's going on. You know what? Maybe I'll just clear this dungeon. It's easy enough to do. This is probably the first uh, dungeon you'll probably clear in the Far East. Um, I did the uh, Boar's Armory first, but this would probably be the first one that you'd probably find. There's a way down. There's a Devourer. What fun they are, of course. There's some Drake Hatchlings. There is a Master Assassin. For some reason, there's lots of Oozmancers in here for some reason. I think there's a second Oozmancer I killed in here. Or maybe that was in uh, Bragg's Lair that I'm thinking about. Okay, this guy's got Reload. He's got Shield Expertise. Um, this guy, I'm not exactly sure what he is. But uh, he's like a warrior type of some sort. So we're just going to jump on him. Pretty much kill him off easily enough. Here's some more weavers, by the way. I'll note that the weavers, they come in like different types of forms. So we got, you know, we fought the weaver patriarch before. Now here's some weaver youngs coming up to say hi. I'll note, by the way, with these oozes that they have a time limit because they don't last, um, you know, the entire duration. You know, they, once they, those oozes, oozes uh, spawn their like stuff, they'll, they'll eventually go away. So those, uh, Ooze type of minions that they summon will uh, this this depart if you want to leave them alone. Got the Sarm there. And I just killed him back with Windblade. Is that gonna be it? A little bit more down here apparently. There's an invisibility ruin. Here's another type of spire, the Ungulmar. It's basically an elite type of spire that has lots of armor. So if I look at this guy, you'll notice that he has 30% armor highness and 75% armor. So these guys are really tough hided spiders type of, uh, type of idea. They have a few talents like... Um, here's regeneration. So... I don't think that's actually an, a, an infusion, but rather actually is regeneration that it sort of has. So these guys are kind of, you know, durable. Not really, really to me, but they can be durable to uh, less damaging classes. Here is uh, Gellarmarsh. I'll note that I guess these guys are kind of like stealthy spiders. 
Is that what they are? Yeah, these spires here are stealth, so that's why I couldn't see them there. Stealth is not really a big issue to me anymore, but um, I'll note that um, if like once I once you get four or five like you know piercing sight, you almost like have enough no worry um, to stealthy enemies except for like the rares or uniques. I'll probably get up to five of five eventually, but um, for now four or five is you know probably going to be where we're going to leave it for some time being. I'll note that these fairlings are like arcane spiders. These guys are like phantasmal shield. He's also got um, arcane power and other stuff like magical abilities and such. Uh, I'll note that much like the vampire lords, I don't want to be just hitting them willy-nilly because of the fact that they'll do so much damage to me when I hit them. So we'll avoid hitting those guys as much. Alright, that's it for Arnahol. We'll just take a quick look and see if there's anything with constitution attached to it. I've already got helmets and all that with more constitution, so that's no good. Can't wear that. Can't wear shields. I'll note by the way that this Nagar Meridian right here, he used something called Ruin Control Phase Door. Ruin control phase door, uh, as you can see, basically lets him zap uh, wherever he wants to go. This guy actually uses it to zap right on top of me, so he actually targeted me with that ruin control door, and then he landed basically in my vicinity as a result. So that was intentional for him to sort of jump on me there. It wasn't he just randomly appeared next to me. He actually quite literally tried to uh, get in melee as quickly as possible, since he's a melee type of uh, enemy. Ah, oh, something with cold. Probably this guy right here. Oh, okay, this guy is an archer rogue. I'm gonna activate these. We're gonna shadow step him. Wow, okay, so we finally come across one of the uh, elite horrors that I've yet to find. Here is the Radiant Horror. Uh, Radiant Horrors, and this guy's a rare by the way. Uh, Radiant Horrors, they, they pair up with these Luminous Horses, Luminous Horrors, much like, you know, Luminous Horrors pair up with each other. You can sometimes find these guys along with them, though. Um, these guys, it's kind of hard to really see from this, but they usually have very high Sun Flare and Sun type of talents and Light type of talents. So this guy, um, these guys are very d deadly sometimes if you can't really care for their health. They're really good at regenerating health and doing detrimental effects to you if you're not careful. I don't think it'll be too much of an issue for my Shadow Blade to sort of deal with, but I sort of want to be very careful with him around. He also does this like sort of circle of blazing light, and um, I suppose we should probably just, you know, hover over what that does. So, he used the circle of blazing light, creates a circle of radius 5 at your feet, the circle lights up affected tiles, increases your positive energy by 2, um, deals light damage and fire damage to everyone within the radius, and uh, it lasts for 10 turns. So it's basically a very powerful regener regenerative type of thing that lets him build up his positive energy so he can keep using talents on top of me. Lots of fun for him, not really for me. And we stunned him. And he's dead. So those guys, you all know those guys, those varying horrors, you encounter him a whole lot early, earlier in this, they're just really deadly. I've encountered those guys in um, the old maze as an out deaf um, enemy, and they were not fun. Just normally in the early game, if you encounter them, they'll they'll tear you to pieces. They're one of the worst uh, out deaf enemies to fight. There's a mage hunter. Ouch. Hit the shields there a little bit. Because I forgot about that. Like, like all my special effects that keep going off, those little explosions are basically for me milling with my weapons. Uh, specifically, this one right here has like this chance to basically do a ram, ram elemental explosion whenever I hit stuff. If you're wondering where it's ha coming from, it's from this weapon right here. So, whenever I hit stuff, I'll basically cause them to explode into elemental fury sometimes. 
I think it requires I do a critical hit, but uh, you know, it's not really a big issue. I'm going to probably critical everything at this point. And I accidentally moved around there. Okay, that's good. Let's try doing this. Boink. Alright, let's, uh, let's get rid of them. The Untouchable. Awesome. Alright, uh, we just actually picked up a very powerful item that I really want to make note of. The Untouchable is this jacket type of um, item that basically what happens, when you take a hit of more than 20% of your max uh, life, a shield is created equal to 150% of the damage taken. I've used this in past uh, runs, you know, this awesomely. This is like a very awesome type of like defensive item because if like, you know, you're a low HP type of character, you can get very big shields as a result from the Intouchable. It's also good on like high HP characters if um, you take really big hits from stuff because you can get really big shields whenever you like, you know, get hit by big stuff when it happens. Uh, the other stuff in here, I don't think I really care about. So we're just going to move you out, and we'll just sell off the uh, stuff. What am I using right now? This is, uh, oh, I'm still using the con thing, so what was I using before that? I think I was using Oak Butcher. Oak Butcher was kind of cool, but since I found this, um, this item, the Untouchable. Oh, damn it, I need actually 16 strength to put this on. Uh, I kind of wish they get, got rid of some of these strength, you know, requirements they have for some of this stuff. Because it's kind of annoying sometimes. Alright, so the Untouchable, it's on, it's ready to kick some ass, and here we go with it, basically. Do I really want to keep these daggers, I wonder? We're going to get rid of Moon. I don't think I plan to use it again. I plan to get rid of, I'll get rid of Star. I don't think I really care about the Silent Blade too much, but it does have a purpose, so I'm going to keep it for later. And we will continue on in Arden Hall. Arden Hall. Ah, whatever. I should probably be more careful of this guy, actually. Nope, don't need to be careful of this guy. I'll note that if you see guys with skulls at any given time, you really should be checking to see what their talents are. Uh, specifically, when we get to them, I'll show... Uh, uh, you know what? Remember the Grand Corruptor from the Spellblaze? If you recall, I basically didn't fight him. But um, when we get back to him, if we haven't uh, found what these like you know these enemies with like the skulls going around them do, I'll basically show you off why you want to be very careful with them at that point. They basically have this very powerful ability that... Hello there, worm! Oops. Zoink. <laughs> yeah, you can do fire damage to these guys if they have 100% resistance if you have uh, the ability to pierce it. I realized I didn't kill him and it's kind of worthless to do, but I did anyways. Injuring myself hitting those damn fairlings. Alright, that's it for the second level. It doesn't look like anything in here is going to be beneficial to me. Nice helmet there. I note that on the third level, this is a very small instance. Um, it bas on the third level, it's basically very compact, lots of stuff spawns, and there's a boss enemy. But I know something. I'm actually going to get rid of the summer type file at this point. Um, I've been keeping this for this, like the light resistance, but I really don't need it for that anymore. So we're going to get rid of it just for that. You know, we don't need it anymore for it, so we don't really need to carry it. And I, I was using this long, long ago, but we've almost never used it from this point, and I don't think I will. 
it might be useful, you know, it might have been useful for, like, you know, attacking stuff around corners and such, but we're probably not going to use it either, so it's going to remove it, so I can have a little bit more space in here. I'm just trying to make a little space in this character. Um, we can drop this because I don't really need to read it or keep it. And all this other stuff I might use. You know what, we're going to take this off, I don't really need it. Night Song. Night Song was, uh, again, this is like a useful thing, but I think we'll get rid of it. Blood Collar is useful, but we're actually going to get rid of it as well. And yeah, I'm going through the rings because at this point it's time to start clearing up stuff in here. Um, we don't really need this. This gives me Constitution, so I'll keep it for that. That gives some Freeze Immunity, that's still possibly worth it. This gives the quick multiplier. I'll put that on till uh, I look at the other stuff. That gives movement speed, con, and constitution. So it's worth, you know, just for constitution. That gives critical multiplier. That's good offensively. I'll note that I'm not putting this on right now because the stuff right now I'm fighting is not really worth my time to really care about, anyways. So, unflinching eye, the negative 25% light resistance. If I fight that uh, Raiden Horde there, by the way, and had this on, they would have just ripped, the, the, ripped me to pieces because I would have been taking so much more damage from them. So that's worth sort of pointing out. Um, I'm not sure we really need to choke, choke our dread anymore, so we'll get rid of that. That's just sort of like a show it off and be done with it. I don't really need the Withering Orbs, so we'll get rid of it. So we'll get rid of all that. Keeping this for con, keeping this for con. I don't really need this anymore because I was keeping it, you know, as a backup type of thing to put on, but I don't really need it because I got the untouchable now, which is actually going to be. This could be used like for in the end game if you want to, because it's so damn powerful, even though it's a tier free item. Constitution, Constitution. That's a strength item right there. Water breathing. And that stuff. Okay, so we made a little bit of space there. Not a whole lot, but it's enough. There's a Patriarch. All right. Where, oh, where is the boss in here? Level up. That's good enough, I guess. We will, um, I want to get this, like, point here, I think. By the way, you'll notice that this is grayed out, but I've got the 2 of 5 in here. Because I've got pre the premise category already, um, I basically already have, you know, I basically have these talents for visible in here, so if I ever take, take this to the category point, I could start, you know, investing stuff in here, but because I didn't, I basically only have that for the escrow rewards, so that's why it's 2 of 5 right there. Um... Drop, drop, in there, and a bit more cunning. As you can see, we've almost got this up to, uh, we're getting this up to 60 very quickly. Let's hit you with a disarm to begin with. This guy's in Norfil, by the way, but he's a dead in Norfil. There we are. So here's the boss of this instance, Ungul. The huge spider shrouded in darkness. Her eye, her red glowing eyes dying to fix on you. She looks hungry. So this spider, she's got lots and lots and lots of uh, inscriptions, in this case infusions all over the place. And she's not really too tough, but she has something called darkness. So she can basically weave darkness in a raise of five, blocking all light, but the most powerful until, um, but the most powerful and teleporting you a short range. So, you know, she can basically be kind of annoying. That's basically what she is. She's an annoyance more than anything else. I'm just going to jump on her. Hit her like that. Note that this guy's surviving even though, you know, with his bitten damn armor because he's, you know, he's armored so he takes a few more hits, that guy. So at that. The Phantasmal Shield, she's got really hurting. So after you kill her, some Paladin Ration pops out. 
As the monster spire falls, you see something moving in her belly until it explodes. A tall black man steps out, spewed in guts, surrounding by golden light. By the sun, I fought to I never see a friendly face. Thank you, I am Rashim, I am your debt. I have been sent by your life, she's worried about you. Ah, my dear heart. Well, now that I am free, I will create a port through the gates of morning. I think I've seen enough spires for the rest of my life. Lead away. So yes, once you basically beat the fire here, you can uh, pick up whatever they drop. And there's actually a portal to get you right back to the last hope. Um, keep the raw spider poison, by the way, because uh, it's something I believe you can use uh, regardless of whether it's, it's equipped or not. You know, it's kind of like um, Gwei's Burinator here. It's useful regardless of whether it's equipped or not. Ah, uh, this other stuff. This could be interesting. Yeah, let's actually pick up the burglar's uh, lamp. I'll basically show that off. All right, we're going to put that on. So here is the burglar, burglar's alchemist lamp. So I'll note that this, uh, this special lamp here, um, you'll notice that it gives negative seven light radius. So this thing actually kills your light radius completely. This is uh, used for like rogues and for shadow blades who invest in the stealth category because if, you know, it's also good for invisibility, but when you want to be hidden, this is what you use. You use this burglar's, burglar's alchemist type of lamp because it basically kills off your, um, your light radius and gives you infra infra infravision basically instead. And I'll basically show off what that's all about. All right, once you basically go uh, save that guy, you go up to Melinda here. And you get Arachnophobia to Achievement. I'll note that after you do this, by the way, you'll unlock some Paladins if uh, you're looking to unlock them. And that's all that. Now, at this point, I'll note that I basically have the ingredients for the guy from Last Hopes. So that's where we're going to go right now. We're just going to go over here, and we're going to use our Orbital Many Ways. A few missing things there and all that. I'll note that here's a town for this right here, so I think I want to make use of that. Go ahead and just drop it right there. Yeah, I know I spent a lot of time shifting this stuff around, don't I? Actually, that's fine. We're just going to leave it like that. So we use the orb in many ways, and zap, we are back in the main continent. So after you basically uh, do that, you can go back here to Last Hope and talk to the Elder, and uh, he'll basically give you a quest to basically um, do something to get back there, I guess, pretty much. So we're just going to jump into Last Hope here. I was also going here for the Alchemist too, right? So. It's not like I'm going just for him. We're going to go to the Alchemist here and say hi. Great work, and you still in one piece, I see. Always nice. I feel the same way about safely bringing up a particularly tricky mixture. I never blown my face, uh, I near blown my face clean off several times. Oh, while you were gone, a little bear told me a dive dirt has managed to create a elixir precision to land fish before me. Okay, give him the monster bits. Give me an hour, blah, blah. Wait. The door finally comes to vial. Thank you, I'll be off. All right, so basically, um, I want—I basically had help this guy again, and uh, I used it to make the elixir foundations. This is the other elixir you should probably create first if you can. When you do, you basically get some uh, generic points because you can invest wherever you want. And let's see, where do I want to invest these? What if I got the con gear to like put that on just to just to see how my con can go? I can actually save that by the way, that uh, con gear. Or not con gear, but those uh, generic points for other stuff. There's actually a reason to coming up actually in a bit, but um, I wouldn't mind getting you know uh, my fixed skin up to five five if I can. So we'll see if I uh, can do that first. So blah blah blah. We'll put this all on. And what's my con stat at? 49. Okay, I guess I'm 10 points short of putting this on. So, I gotta basically find 10 points if I want to put something in fixed skin at this point. So, we might not be doing that. 
I may, you know, just uh, not be able to do it. Or I, I actually could, but it would require me investing in Constitution, which I could uh, actually uh, particularly do eventually on this character, but we'll try not to, because I don't really feel like it. And I don't really want to. Trying to remember what I had on from before. And right, I can't put this on until I uh, have the strength to do so. So there we go, we did that. I'm wheeling this to show that off. That's the nice thing about the first two at this point. I actually need it for the uh, carrying capacity. Because I have so much gear in here. Mostly it's con gear, but you know, whatever. Um, if you want, you can go back to him and ask to make another thing. This guy will let you make a strength constitution potion um, at this point because I've already made the other one. If you go in here, you'll see that uh, without my help, he completed the Elixir of Stone Skin. I don't really care about either of these uh, you know, potions that he sort of has, so I don't really care about it, but it's something to sort of consider. Now, at this point, if I want to, I could go over to Maris and... Um, if I want to, I could basically go make the other potion that uh, she has. But we're actually going to wait for the guy in Durf because he's got the potion that... Um, he basically will make a defensive potion and it's it's still worth building up my defense stat if I can. It's very hard to build up your defense stat when she gets to say like, the, you know, 60 here. But if I could, you know, keep building it, then it'll make my character even more untouchable from stuff that hits me in melee. Which has its uses. And I didn't actually mean to exit this place. That was a big mistake on my part. Actually, you know what? We're going to exit this place. I'm going to go over to... Uh, this thinking. Actually, you know what? We are, we are going to go talk to um, the other first. So, once you basically come here and uh, go back to the Elder, you basically give him a report on what's going on. So, the hunt for staff took me blah blah to the other continent, all the other stuff that ha happens, shenanigans, trade! And he's like, oh, trade, extraordinary. I know a number of merchants, princes, who would sound like the idea of new trade routes. But tell me, how fair is your quest for a staff? Hunt continues, blah, blah, construction of this portal, blah, blah. In that case, I'll, um, I'll let us proceed as quickly as possible, now considering a fascinating portal. Uh, I'm afraid the man of large around him to build a own new, but I'm actually bold. But he tells you about Last Hope's name, Tannen. He claims to hail from Angua and is supposedly hidden for practitioners and magic and mysticism. He arrives just months ago with Phallus Wealth and has already constructed his own tower, blah, blah. So we have to go talk to this guy for a back and there again quest. So back and there again is basically uh, a catch on the uh, old quest we did. If um, you recall, we did there, then, um, there and back again the first time around. Now we're going to go to uh, Tannen to do the back and there again, which is basically the reverse. So here's Tannen, how many good service. Relative to him, the staff of Orb in many ways. Astonishing, I've heard tell of this Orb in ancient texts, and nothing but I see it. Truly, it is work of the great master. Perhaps Linali herself had a uh, hand in his making, and you say you come bearing instruction of usage. And it's like, blah, blah. Ah, I see. I first got to his benefits, but I see this is poor penmanship, blah, blah. He basically says, Orcs created this portal in the dust of Rechnor. They must have had access to these items. These items cannot pass through the portal they created, and then it stands reason that they must stand in Master Yell. So, dual search Rechnor, he says. And then, one last thing. Now, I want to know something very special about Tannen. He basically gives you these two options, which is basically hand him the orb, or I still require the orb. When you basically look at these options, these are actually an either-or type of option, because they lead you up to different dungeons, if uh, you click one of your other options. So, you basically um, have like a sort of like thing in your run, a decision to make on what you want to do. If you hand the orb now, he basically sends you off to a death trap of a tower, and if you still require the orb and actually keep the orb, he sends you um, basically the Fear Escape, which is kind of interesting. I'll basically show you that off, I guess. Very well, there's no little hurry, but I will still send a number of days setting up before we create your portal. I understand, blah, blah. So he basically sends you on a quest to go to Rechnor, and we will do that in a bit, but I actually want to do something first. So yes, we're back in ba Magiel again. Now, we're actually going to uh, end the episode here because I think I've gone on long, long enough. But next time we uh, continue, we're actually going to jump into the Sandworm Tunnels here. And we're actually going to be revisiting all these dungeons that we've visited that we've cleared already. And there's a very special reason for doing so. 
and it's a very good reason to do so as well. So next time, I'll see you guys back in the sandworm lair. Take care.